أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولا يرون أنهم يفتنون في كل عام مرة أو مرتين ثم لا يتوبون ولا هم يذكرون سرق الله العلي العظيم our respected ulama, respected elders, brothers, sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. All praise is due to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one, the creator, the cherisher, the sustainer, and our salam salutations upon the Holy Prophet Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family and his trusted companions. Qala rabbi shrahli sadri wa sirli amri wa ahlul uqadatan min lisani of qawqawli. Whenever we examine the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam there is always good advice for every event in our lives and as Muslims living in South Africa we've been ushered into a new year and we would always find that the advice of the Qur'an is that we have to practice muhasaba that means self-evaluation and reset our lives for a new year which is very, very important for us as Muslims. And if we look at ourselves during the past year, we find that we have shared the year that has passed. And most of the time, we as human beings and as Muslims, we don't really care about how time is moving very quickly in our lives. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said in a beautiful hadith in the Bab of Qiyamah, he said a day is going to be like an hour. An hour is going to be like a minute and a minute is like it to be in the twinkling of an eye. A month will be like a week and a year is going to become like a, uh, uh, like a month. And time has moved fast. Within the less than same, was probably just a little bit over 60 days, we're going to go back to Ramadan. And we haven't even opened our eyes and it's the next Ramadan. And that is why we should be ever conscious of those minutes that move into hours, hours into days, and days into weeks, weeks into months. And now we have finished with the end of 2022. And there's a saying by some of the scholars of Islam, they say morning comes, then comes the evening. And through the cycle of mornings and evening, time, time goes by. It moves all the time. And we as human beings need to understand that we have got absolutely no control over time. The only being who has control over time is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the first thing we need to understand. And the day that we were born to our mothers, Allah has given us a certain capital of time. And that time, that capital becomes less and less every day that we live. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Tawbah, Surah 9 verse 126, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Are people not aware? Allah says, Are they not aware that they have been tested year in and year out? And yet they do not repent or open their eyes and turn away from the errors. Nor, says Allah, do they reflect and learn a lesson from the past. Listen to what Allah says in the Quran. And I'm going to repeat it. Allah says, are people not aware that they have been tested year in and year out? Allah says, and yet they do not repent or open up their eyes or turn away from the errors, nor do they reflect and learn a lesson from the past. Firstly, we started last year coming out of the period of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we, are, we, are, we ended this year with the unfortunate reality in our country of the problem we're all facing in this country of load shedding from one it went to another and we were hopeful of the potential findings 
of the reopened inquest into the death of Imam Abdullah Harun Rahimahumullah. But we are less hopeful about the curbing of crime and corruption in this beautiful country that we are living in. And that is why we even witness in the World Cup a country from Af Africa reaching the semi-finals in the most watched event in the history of humanity. And we find it was held in a Muslim land. An opportunity where there was visible solidarity by people throughout the world for the Palestinian people. But it also showed us the demeaning, prejudicial, Islamophobic sentiments of many people who still have the mentality of the colonialists. My dear brothers and sisters, in a world and at a time like this, we need to make a tremendous amount of introspection, firstly as Muslims, for the world, for the governments of the world, for leaders, for communities, and most important for families and individuals. Because one thing we need to realize, we all fill up the blocks of the building blocks of society. There are some of us who lived in what we say in our own little cocoons and own little islands. But whatever happens in the world influences everything that happens to us here in South Africa. And that is why the root word that comes from the word when Allah says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alim, the word Alam comes the word Awlama. The word Awlama means global, the world has become small. When we were much younger, we never ever dreamt that what is happening at this very moment in another country, in the next second, we will have the news here in South Africa. So the world has become small and Allah speaks about this in the Quran. And that is why, my dear brothers and sisters, there are many people who are experiencing tremendous anxiety, negativity of the past and uneasiness about the future. Many of us have these anxieties and fears and these worries. And there are many Muslims and non-Muslims who are going to depression due to job insecurities, financial debts, concern. Alhamdulillah, they all have gone for the exam results. Family tensions, inability to manage expectations. So we've left 2023, 2022. What have we really prepared for 2023? And the pertinent question for an uncertain future is what we all need to ask the question is how could my today positively impact on my tomorrow? It's very, very important. Because some of us live a life which is aimless and purposeless. We have no goal in our lives. We get up in the morning and we go through life just the same routine. We are our goals as the Muslims and the Muslim Ummah. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in the Quran to carefully consider what we are sending forth for the future. This is what Allah commands us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya iwalladhina amanu attaqullah, wal tandhul nafsu ma qaddamad lighad, wa attaqullah, inna Allah khabirun mima ta'amaloon. In Surah Al-Hashr, Surah, Surah 59, verse 18, Allah says, O oh, you proclaim who to believe in Allah. Allah says, Ittaqullah, be conscious of Allah. Be dutiful to Allah. Remember, my dear brothers and sisters, no matter who or what you are, Allah speaks to mankind and Allah says to mankind, Ya ayyuhal insan, you're going to strive and toil and move, says Allah. But remember your end goal is none other but your Rabb. For He created you. He caused our existence. So Allah reminds us in the ayah, be conscious of Allah. For He's every, every second of our lives, He's with us. No matter where we are. Allah says, Wherever you are, I'm with you. Says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah says, Nafsum ma qaddamat lighad. And carefully consider what you have sent forth for tomorrow, for the future. Be sincerely conscious of your duty to Allah. Surely Allah is well informed of everything 
that each and every human being does. My dear brothers and sisters, this introspective question should evoke in us the need for muhasaba. What is muhasaba? It was a practice of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the great Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and the awliya and the saliheen. Muhasaba is introspection, critical evaluation of oneself. Critical evaluation of oneself, self-evaluation. It is easy to criticize another human being, but do we really criticize ourselves? Look ourselves in the mirror and say, what kind of a human being am I? What kind of a Muslim am I? Self-inventory, honest self-analysis, self-appraisal, and that is muhasaba. So muhasaba, my dear brothers and sisters, helps us in appraising our lives and our deeds. What did I do in the past year? There are certain things that we have done good, alhamdulillah. People have seen it. There are some good things we did, nobody saw, but Allah Allah knew. And then there were many things that we did wrong. Sometimes in the open and sometimes in secret. And the only being who knows all of that is Allah. And we have to say to ourselves, what did I do with the material gain that Allah gave me in the year 2022? If Allah gave me a lot of wealth, did I use it in the path of Allah? Or did I waste it? Did I move on or didn't I move on? I give you an example. When we had the COVID-19 pandemic, we Muslims never learned anything. Absolutely nothing. And I'll give you examples. In the COVID-19 pandemic, when somebody wants to get married, you couldn't invite in so many people. You couldn't waste money. You could only invite the closest, so forth and so on. So there was 50 people, it was, was a lot. But the couple still got married and they still embarked on the marriage. Yes or no? Yes. As soon as COVID-19 pandemic disappeared, Muslims went back to their old ways. They started inviting 500 people. What Khatim means is he was Mutfa Amul invite. And let me tell you something, my dear brothers and sisters. I've spoken at many weddings and one day I forgot my specs at this particular venue. When I came back the next morning, the food that was on the table, that was served that night, biryani, this chicken and that steak or whatever, was all laying on the table the next morning with flies sitting on it, wasn't even picked up. And yet there are millions of Muslims who are hungry. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? وَلَا تُسْرِفُ إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ Do not be extravagant, do not be wasteful. For Allah does not love those who are wasteful, says Allah. We don't learn. We still waste money, my dear brothers and sisters. And then we have these big things. You know, it's like I always tell you, you've been to weddings. You know, when a couple comes, they tell the caterer, you know, well, I call it underplate. That underplate to invite 200 people costs you about 25 to 30 rands. So 200 people are six rand. That plate, nobody eats in it. The only other thing is that other plate sitting on top of it. That's it. But it is there for show. For what? It's wastage. And yet we haven't learned from the COVID-19 pandemic that we had those weddings that we needed to have and we spent the very least money. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that that marriage which takes place and in this least of wastage, Allah's mercy descends upon the people and the couple. Where there is his raf, Allah's curse descends upon them. We haven't learnt. The second thing we haven't learnt last year and you need to consider these things is how we prioritize our time how we prioritize our time we as muslims what did we do when they closed the masajid how can they close the mosque how can they do this a house of allah it was a lesson for us that throughout south africa and was probably throughout the world we have all these beautiful masajid. The only time we fill it up is on the day of Jumu'ah and the day of Eid and a little bit in Ramadan. 
And now we were taught, you have to make salah at home, you have to lead your family, you have to uh, prioritize the time, and even if you come to masjid, you sometimes have to come 10 minutes before the time or 15 minutes before the time. Now I want you to think about it. Because when we want to come to masjid, we need to hear the adhan. And we revolve, we want the masajid to revolve around our lives. Not our lives revolve around the house of Allah. If that Bilal gives adhan two minutes before the time, the people found Sheikh, you know he gave minute, the adhan two minutes before them. I said, yeah, but where are you? You were watching when the Bilal gave the adhan, but you're still sitting at home. That's not your business. Come to the house of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us a lesson. Especially as South African Muslims. It is free to worship in the houses of Allah. We build it. But how many of us really pay attention to the house of Allah? How do we prioritize our times around salah? No, you want to come into the masjid. Ramadan is going to come. And we look at ourselves. The masjid that reads a full Quran is the emptiest. The one that runs it up and down and kisses the ground, virgin active, is the fullest. Right or wrong? What if we learned? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to teach us a lesson. The third thing is, my dear brothers and sisters, is that remember in the COVID-19 pandemic, it was a virus, we couldn't see it. Am I right? You can't see it. Unless you go into the, I think the microscope, some kind of a microscope or whatever. But humanly, you can't see it. You can't see it at all. And what we don't realize, that is another lesson from Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us a very important fact. That this unseen virus that came and affected our lives and brought the world to a standstill. An absolute standstill. The entire world, even the haramains, to a standstill. Was only under the command of Allah. Under the command of no other being but Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to teach us. We believe in the unseen. Do we then not fear the power of Allah? And what, how do you explain that? A very close family member of us was a doctor in another area. In one of the upcountry areas. And during the COVID-19 pandemic... A fat Bura guy, you know, Bura guy, fat one. He's about five times my size. Can you imagine how big he is? All right? They can't fit him in the ambulance on the side. They have to open up the back doors. They have to open up the back doors to put him in. This guy had a heart problem, high blood pressure, psyche, this and that and everything. When he came into the hospital with COVID-19, all right, the person who was there was actually my daughter, who was the doctor. She said to herself, this man is going to die. Two weeks thereafter, he walked out and he's still living. What does it teach us? That life and death is in the hands of not even the virus or anything. It is only in the hands of Allah. Have we not even learned that? That everything that happened in the past two or three years only happened illa bi idhnillah with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is why when we make muhasaba it allows us to make an analysis of ourselves our strengths our weaknesses the opportunities which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted us as well as appreciation of what we have and what we require Physically, intellectually, ideologically, economically, individually and socially, as well as spiritual. How many of us really thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of this year? We sat down and when the new year began. And said to Allah, shukran for giving me a little bit in the past year. Because we complain and we complain, you know, you know businessmen. I asked him one day, how's business? Yeah, very bad. I said, how much did you make a day? He said, 150 grand. How much did you make before? 250. I said, you should say, alhamdulillah. Allah still giving you a rizik. Why are you complaining? 
No, but I need to make more. I said, to do what? He says, no, I need to buy a new car. Where's your mentality? Is that is what it means? What you want the, the, the uh, you know, the rizq of Allah? Rizq doesn't mean material wealth. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala, and he says, you know what is zuhd? You know what is qana'a, is contentment and zuhd is to live? He said zuhd and qana'a means that if Allah has given you millions, if the next day Allah is taking it away from you, you're still satisfied with Allah. That is zuhd, that is qana'a. So my dear brothers and sisters, the stepping stone to honestly engage our reality. What is our reality of life? There are some of us, you know, one great scholar says, in fact, Allah says in the Quran, uh, I can't just come to the ayah, but it is an ayah of the Quran, without a doubt. Allah says, you can live all your lives on this earth, but yet you'll be dead. And the day that you die, you actually start living again. That is why the scholar says you have to die to be born again. You have to die to be born again. What does this mean, my dear brothers and sisters? You have to uh, en engage in our reality. What is my reality of life? Am I just going every day and following the same routine? Yes, no, it doesn't work that way. We need to start adjusting ourselves to meet our challenges. And finding practical solutions to address our concerns in this world. You know, one of the things that happened just before Christmas or whatever. Many brothers and sisters were sending me this clip of our brothers and sisters in Saudi Arabia celebrating Halloween. You know, we say it's in the vicinity of the Kaaba, Medina, Jeddah, Riyadh or whatever. Everybody was having a whole big say. So I said, just leave them alone. They need to go through their journey. Now that they have a certain amount of freedom, we have been having freedom all the years. Because there are some of our people in South Africa, they say, you know, when it's Christmas, you must also have an exchange of gifts. What is it? Santa, something they call it, secret uh, presents or whatever. So I said to them, it's not permissible in Islam. So he said to me, Sheikh, you know, Imam, You've been uh, outtakes, you understand? You've been uh, a bit harsh. I said, why didn't you follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu <laughs> The sunnah is when it is Muharram. Narrated in hadith, it was a practice of the Rasul Sallallahu and the Sahaba. When the Muharram comes, the Rasul Sallallahu said, let there be an exchange of gifts between the family members to increase the love and the coming of the new year. It's hadith. It's a practice. So when you explain to people this is how Islam works, then it's a different matter altogether. So I sat with him, I said, I will join you. I have no problem. And when I sat with him, I started explaining them, to them how the Prophet ﷺ encouraged gifts between family members. And when at the time of the beginning of the Islamic New Year, they looked at me and they never knew. So I said, Alhamdulillah, what we need to do if we know we have to give the hidayah. Simple. And we move away from that which they are practice, which is based, based upon pagan origins. We move away from that. But we are not otates. We do not say, and you don't fight. You give the guidance from the Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. My dear brothers and sisters, there are certain essentials for muhasaba. Muhasaba, this introspection, be honest with yourself. Siddiq. We have honesty. And honesty, said the Prophet ﷺ, leads to what is right. Be honest with yourself. And who is the best person to speak to to criticize you? Huh? Who is the best person to ask to say what kind of a person you are? Who? Most of you won't ask as your wife. Because if she starts speaking, if you're married to her 50 years, she start from day one. You know, I always say this to some women, and please don't take offense, but the woman has a memory better than an elephant. What you did to her 20 years ago, she's going to remember. So you go to your wife and you ask her, sit down with her and say, please describe me. Not only as your husband, as a father, as a human being. 
Why? Because when they asked Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, describe Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did she say? Kana khulukuhu ala al-Quran. You look at the Quran, you see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you see the Quran. My wife and your wife is only going to smile. Let me not start. But she'll tell you honestly. And if we have weaknesses, let us sit down and rectify and change. And we're coming to that now. The second one is sincerity, ikhlas. That whatever you do, an action you do, you do it with sincerity. You don't, you know, do something and you walk out. You know, yesterday somebody came to ask me, you know, your big businessman came to ask me 20 grand. I just gave it to them, mashallah. And I say, must give it in the name of my mother, write the name down or whatever. The hadith is clear. What the right hand gives, the left hand mustn't know. The left hand gives, the right hand mustn't know. Simple. You leave your reward with who? With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you give, do not expect anything in return. Expect only the reward, the ajr from who? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then my dear brothers and sisters, humility, tawadu'a. The arrogant lack of the ability to see our shortcomings. And sometimes it closes the door to self-improvement. Self-improvement. We have to improve ourselves first. Sometimes we're arrogant. You know, sometimes we mistake as Muslims humility and humbleness as a, weak, as a weakness. Do you know that? But the most humble human being was none other than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And he taught the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and that. He inculcated that within the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala. And one day, when Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala was the Khalif, some of the Sahaba were sitting next to him. And they started praising him. So he started taking the sand of the earth and wiping it over himself. He says, hey, hey have you gone mad? He says, I'm doing this because it reminds me that I come from dust. I'm going back to dust. Why are you praising me? Look at the humility. When Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, when he proceeded and they conquered Palestine and Jerusalem, when they entered the city of Jerusalem, all the priests and their rabbis and the archbishops were waiting for Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala. They heard about this great man. And they saw this horse coming. They saw a man with a chubba with patches on it. And the person who was on top of the horse had a smart, nice, you know, cloak. So the priests and the archbishops, they went to go greet the man on the horse. Because I like more smart. So the man got off and said, why are you coming to me? This man standing is Umar radiallahu ta'ala. What do we do? You see... Sometimes we wear that patches and say, hey, the Imam comes to us, but what I'm trying to say, this was the humility. And sometimes we mistake humility and humbleness for a weakness, but it is the greatest strength that anybody can have. And that was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then, my dear brothers and sisters, acknowledgement of our shortcomings. Acknowledgement of our shortcomings. Acknowledge that we have shortcomings. None of us are perfect. None of us are angels. We were not created from light. Remember that. None of us are angels. We are all sinners. And we constantly have to make toba in some way or the other. And acknowledge our shortcomings. If somebody says, my brother, in constructive criticism, this is what we need or whatever, then listen. And that is why, how many years have you been given? Oh, Yalaviti. You have been given two years. I know there was a beautiful article written by a female scholar in America. And I spoke about this article at a wedding. Because most of us, we don't listen to our wives. As if we it say, Yeah, we are money, we sort, man, or whatever, money, we are in. That's where we brush off our, our, our women in our society. Who took advice from a woman? Who took advice from a woman? 
Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After he performed this Umrah, after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, some of the Sahaba were upset with the Prophet sallallahu because they thought he gave him too much. He then, after the Tawaf of Umrah, he told him, go and cut off your hair. Then they all sat there without immediately being obedient to him. They were still upset. He was sitting in his tent and he became sad. He was disappointed. So his wife, Um Salama, asked him, that, oh, my husband, what is wrong? So he explained to her. So she said to him that, oh, my husband, you know they love you so much. They will do anything you want them to do. You will go and cut your hair and they will cut their hair. He went to do it and they all did it. Took advice from a woman. And in this article of this female scholar, and some of us say, ooh, Sheikh is taking knowledge from a female now, Billah. You know, sometimes we have these ideas. Who taught Imam Shafi rahimahumullah? A great scholar of Egypt said that in Nafisa, she taught Imam Shafi rahimahumullah. And here in this article, she writes the title of it, The Lost Art of Listening. The Lost Art of Listening. For when we listen and we listen to the Quran and hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what should listen first? Not the ears, but what? The heart. The heart. Allah says, Inna fi dharika liman kana lu qalbun aw al qassam wa huwa shaheed. The heart should start listening. So when the wife speaks, you listen to her with your heart, not with your one ear and out of the other ear. And the same thing with her. If she needs to be rectified and she has shortcomings, you rectify her. But Allah says, you rectify in an ahsan way, in a beautiful way, and with sincerity. My dear brothers and sisters, the last part is, because of time constraints, we need to have the desire to change, and the intention to change. The biggest problem with Muslims, we don't like change. We so inculcated for years in a particular way of doing things. A number of years ago, at the masjid, masjid where I was the Imam, I gave my talk and I used the, uh, you know, the screen and whatever. I had guys coming to me and saying to me, Sheikh, na'udhu billah, is a big bidah, is shaitan, does that and the other. My friends, my brothers and sisters, if you don't move with the times, and you don't use the technology of the times, you're going to be lost. Understand that very clearly. The most powerful weapon in the world today is what? Do you think it is bombs? you think it is guns? It's the social media. It is the cell phones, the smartphones, the internet. Everything is so powerful today in social media. It's making us even think the way it wants us to think. And that is why the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the one thing we need to do to change we must learn something every day. If we don't, we're going to age faster. You know what it means? Imam Shafi rahimahumullah said every day he learned something new he, he realized how ignorant he was the day before. Who's that? Imam Shafi. Every day he learned something new, he realized how ignorant he was the day before. And make no mistake, the one, the most important gift that we have is what? The greatest miracle, every miracle performed is, was that time is gone. But the greatest miracle given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is what? Al-Quran al-Karim. We sit with a miracle in our homes. We see it every day. We're going to read it every day in the coming month of Ramadan. But how many of us really understand it? When the Imam must give his speech of the tafsir, as soon as that witter is finished, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, you out of there faster than a Ferrari. You need to, we need to learn. Every day we read, we read, we gain knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to strive with all our might to change. But vows, He will not never change on condition 
without an effort on our part. What does this mean, my dear brothers and sisters? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says very beautifully in the verse of the Holy Quran, where Allah says in Surah Ra'd, Inna Allah la yughayruma bi kawmin hatta yughayruma bi anfusihim. Allah will not change a condition of a people until they change from within themselves. And we need to make a paradigm change. We need to move away from certain issues, my dear brothers and sisters. And He promises to guide and assist those who strive to change. Allah states this in Surah Anfal. Also, Allah says, Allah will never change. The favors he bestows on the people until they change what is in themselves. Verily, Allah is, knows everything and He hears everything. Allah created humanity pure and favored them with wisdom and intelligence. He created us pure. You know what is pure? In a beautiful state. And here, very quickly, I want to, to touch on something very quickly. One of the biggest challenges that we're facing is the LGBT, uh, LGBTQ problem. It's like I say now, if you go to Makkah, I got a TikTok thing the other day, uh, you know, they were saying, uh, you know, the, the, the homos, you know, they were walking, you know, also making tawaf. And you know, they were holding fingers and fingers and making tawaf. And nowadays, we as men, if we know if we go tawaf, we have to look at the back and the front. Huh? Our problem is, we're buckling under pressure. People say, yeah, but you know, it's a hormonal structure and it's a this and a that. There was a, a, a book written by doc, Dr. Malik Badri. You must try and, and get it. And you must understand, whenever you go against the balance of nature in which Allah has created this world, humanity and the earth, what are you going to do? You're going to disturb the balance. And that is why they're still looking for a cure for AIDS. Remember that, my dear brothers and sisters. And anybody, my problem is, this is my problem, you can, be, you can differ with me. I will love intolerance by not saying they need to be killed or anything like that. But if that Muslim says, I can be gay, and, and he says, I'm not a practicing gay, hey, go talk rubbish somewhere else. You know, it's like saying a man saying, I won't touch a woman if I'm alone with her. I'm not a practicing, you know. The Prophet Sallallahu very easily said, when a male and a female is alone, who's the third person? Shaitan. I saw two Mufis together, you think Shaitan is not going to be there? Huh? But, and if they believe, and if they believe that what they believe is not contrary to the command of the Quran, then it is Kufr. Then it is Kufr. Understand that very clearly. If Allah says something is haram, then it is haram. If, if it's forbidden, it is forbidden. And if you believe it is not forbidden, and what you are doing is not contrary to the command of Allah, then it is kufr. And understand that very, very carefully. And the problem that we are having, my dear brothers and sisters, the children are being, uh, being taught at schools from primary school. From where? From primary school. You mustn't say him or her. You must say them or whatever. But let's start it. I mean, wake up. And if you watch the, you know, the um, cartoons that's for kids there now. I don't know, because I've got a granddaughter and she wants to watch it. And I watched it and I looked at it, I was shocked. Where two boys play with each other and they kiss each other. And a child of three years old asked me, she said to me, Nana, but why is two boys kissing, kissing and not a girl and a boy? You see how it plays on the mind? When I said media, they make media. And it's going to become so used to it. Every single program that you have on Netflix, the series, Yellow Light is like some all day. Sheikh, did you see this on Netflix and that Netflix? I watch it because I need to know what I'm talking about. It. In every single program, there's either a gay couple or a lesbian couple. Every single one. And you know what sickens me? I see two months since two of our three followers. I rax my nar me bro. And you people are not afraid of this. And we're buckling we, because we say we need to fit in the society of the world. 
You can't change the Quran. You can't change the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. We need to change the minds of people. My dear brothers and sisters, remember my, my dear brothers and sisters, the past is a guide to our future. If we sincerely want to enjoy more opportunities, we need to understand change. By understanding why change takes place. Why? Why does it take place? We will stop wasting energy, time and effort in protecting our beliefs and fighting the unavoidable. Our need to be right is our major obstacle against change. We must understand where change is taking us. Once we realize the need for change, we are better able to use those changes to our advantages. And that is why, you know, the only thing that is constant in this world today is change. Remember when we grew up, and some of the old people might tell you, your father will tell you, sit, you sat. Say, stand, you stand. The same thing with an ustad. Am I right? Today you tell your child, sit down. Why, daddy? Why do you just tell me to do this? Why do you do this? Why that? I say, oh, you're back with a great club. What do we need to do? The one thing that we have lost. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala and said, Train your children according to the age that they are living in. But values don't change. Respect doesn't change. Adab doesn't change. And akhlaq doesn't change. And that is something that we need. We must, it must never be lost. The respect for each other. How we speak to each other. How we debate with each other. Like in the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is why the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, even if you know you're right in a debate. He said, even if you know that you are right in a debate, but you walk away even knowing that you're right and say to the person, Alhamdulillah, you're fine. It's all right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build for you a house in Jannah. And then Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah beautifully stated, you know, it's like some people say, Sheikh, you must speak to that guy, man. He comes with all his nonsense. Leave him alone. He said, don't fight. Leave him alone. He'll come right one day. I'm old now. Before, uh, before I would go and say, yeah, money nonsense, Prati. But you know, as you get older, I'm not that old, by the way. But anyway, as you get older, you realize you have to do things with hikmah, with wisdom. So Imam Shafi, rahimahullah, said, if you debate with a fool and you defeat him, he will hate you for the rest of your life. And he will destroy himself because of his hatred for you. So don't even debate with him. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا خَاتَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا You give the hidayah and the jail don't want to listen. Say assalamu alaikum and you move away. Because sometimes they don't even have two ears. Their ears are blocked, their eyes are blocked, their brain is blocked, everything is blocked. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they don't want to take the guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, those of you that know the Quran, Allah says, I will appoint a shaitan to be your friend. I will appoint a shaitan to be your friend. And that is why, my dear brothers and sisters, the people that practice all these haram things, homosexuality, lesbianism, and all that, the flip side of the word Iblis is yulabbis. The word yulabbis means the more you do this wrong, it then becomes something good to you. So it's flipped over. So everything in the world today, everything halal is looked as haram. And everything haram is looked as halal. And that is how we Muslims are moving into the same thing. So we're changing in which way? Are we going right or are we going left? You don't want to say, maybe we're guilty. I hope you're not, uh, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, guide us, inshallah, protect us and our children very importantly. And my dear brothers and sisters, make sure the greatest enemy is from within the home. Make sure you know, we know what our children are doing because we don't know the directions that they are going. That is why I say, I say this sometimes at weddings also. I say when your child comes to you, uh, daddy, I want to get married. You mustn't ask who. You must ask to what do you want to get married to. 
So it's a male, you have to first make sure it's a female. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. Wa ma'alayna illa al balaghul mubeen. Oh, sorry. Uh, there's a vehicle that's blocking the way. CY241211. Uh, huh? Your car is idling, my brother. <laughs> Mashallah, you ran very quickly in, but <laughs> it's going to cause a problem. So, can you please go and uh, switch off your car? 241211. Uh, the monthly Khatam al Quran will be, inshallah, we are completed on Thursday, the 26th January 2023, after Maghrib. Uh, everybody in the community is invited to attend. And then there is the classes, a reminder, the seer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, by Sheikh Waisi on Tuesday, the 24th of January. Then fiqh classes on Wednesday evenings after Maghrib starting on the 25th. And the hadith classes on Thursdays evenings, inshallah, will start on Thursday the 2nd. And Quran classes on Sunday mornings uh, starting on the 29th of January, inshallah. Uh, these classes will be presented by Hafiz Muhammad Asad, insha'Allah. Uh, uh, all the members of the community is encouraged to attend, insha'Allah. The food sales, please support the food sales in the garage of, of the Juma, insha'Allah. Jazakumullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. الحمد لله الحمد لله الملك القدوس العلي الكبير الغني عن المعين والوزير المنزه عن التحول والتخبير أحمده سبحانه وتعالى وأشكره وأتوب إليه وأستغفره من كل ذنب وتقصير ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم فصل وصل وبارك على هذا النبي الكريم والرسول سيد سند العظيم سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد فيا عباد الله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أيها الإخوة تغيرت أحوال الناس وظهر الفساد في الأرض وهذا من أمارة الساعة كما لا يفعل الآقل البصير فأساء والأدب بين يديه الله وإليه المآب والمصير وعقفوا على باب المعاصي وتعرضوا لأسباب التكفير فكم من كواعد من كواعد الدين غيروه أسوء تخبير وكم من حرمة من حرمات الشر انتهكوها وقل منهم النكير قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أولا يرون أنهم يفتنون في كل عام مرة أو مرتين ثم لا يتوبون ولا هم يتذكرون وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا سجن المؤمن مؤمن وجنة الكافر أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم إنه تعالى جواد كريم قديم ملك بر الرؤوف الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفره 
ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ثم إلى أرواح ساداتنا أبي بكر وأمر وأثمان وعلي وفاتمة والحسن والحسين وعلى سان صحابة والتابعين ردوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين واهد للكفرة والمبددعة والمشركين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين اللهم وفقنا للخيرات ربنا نجنا من القوم الظالمين اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا اللهم استر عيوبنا اللهم حصل مرادنا اللهم احفظ أولادنا اللهم احفظ شبابنا اللهم تمم تقصيرنا اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا وأصلح ذات بيننا واهدنا سبل السلام ونجنا من الظلمات إلى النور وجنبنا الفواحش ما ظهر منها وما بطن وبارك لنا في أسماعنا وأبصارنا وقلوبنا وأزواجنا وذرياتنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكن عذاب النار إباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء للقربة وينع عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكرون يذكركم واشكرون ولا تكفرون أقم الصلاة الله ودامها لا إله إلا الله سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم استقيموا صفوفكم استقيموا يرحمك الله اللهم أحسن قوفنا بين يديك الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يوم يتذكر الإنسان ما سعى وبرزت الجحيم لمن يرى فأما من تغى وآثر الحياة الدنيا فإن الجحيم هي المأوى وأما من خاف مقام ربه ونهى النفس عن الهوى فإن الجنة هي المأوى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين 
اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ثم كان من الذين آمنوا وتواصوا بالصبر وتواصوا بالمرحمة أولئك أصحاب الميمنة والذين كفروا بآياتنا هم أصحاب المشأمة عليهم نار مؤصدة الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله نستغفر الله نستغفر الله نستغفر الله العظيم التواب الرحيم الذي لا اله الا هو الحي القيوم نتوب اليك ونسالك توبه مغفره انك انت التواب الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم انت السلام منك السلام واليك يعود السلام فحينا ربنا بالسلام وادخلنا الجنة نار السلام تباركت ربنا وتعليت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإلى ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكن عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه سبحان ربنا رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين